It's now time to bring you our feature on the show today as we look at the tech startup uh, space. Over the last few years now, regulatory events and policy announcements have raised concerns about the government's support for the tech sector. Now, these are concerns ranging from government's commitment to innovation and also the young people building uh, startups in Nigeria. Now, the Nigeria Startup Bill aims to achieve this and would also look at ensuring that all government agencies and parastatals are aligned on the vision for the Nigerian tech startup ecosystem. The bill is an opportunity to update the uh, Nigerian tech startup ecosystem and also look at outdated laws. The Nigeria tech startup bill, which is also a project and a joint initiative by Nigeria's tech uh, ecosystem and the presidency, is driven by the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy to harness the potential of the digital economy through co-created uh, regulations using its big tent approach. The bill also aims to get inputs from both government and tech ecosystem stakeholders. One of the ways the Nigeria Startup Bill is also securing the commitment of government is by aligning them as well to the President's vision. In his January 1st speech, the President said, and I quote, We will partner with the legislature to develop an enabling environment to turn young people's passion into ideas that can be supported, groomed and skilled. End quote. In addition, today is now the initiative is also engaging all relevant government agencies. It recently held a two-day consultation with these agencies to discuss the contents of the bill and also listen to their concerns. Well, joining me now to discuss this and much more virtually, I have the founder of Collab, Sanusi Ismaila. Good to have you on the breakfast show this morning. Hi, good morning. Good to be here. Now, this bill is one commendable effort, but as part of efforts to ensure that we have startups are protected and can continue to thrive, members of the tech startup community are also being engaged in the drafting of this content. Now, this approach is expected to ensure that all interests are protected and they are able to highlight all the elements that are important for their success. Do you think this is enough to ensure that we have a well-developed document or policy that would support the tech sector? In its entirety I mean um, so I, I want to say it's it's good enough um, the reason being that um, technology moves really quickly um, what is good today might you know be data tomorrow but I think that when you pull in everyone and take you know all the comments uh, into consideration then you sort of cover like most of the bases um, for that, that are necessary for today um, so I think yes it's, it's good enough mm. And then also looking at section 20 of the bill, there are some reports that it says it would also issue licenses and authorizations for tech companies regardless of their size. And also the licenses are classified into three sections, product service provider and also platform provider. Although it doesn't provide additional information about what these licenses entail and how the startups will qualify for them, do you think these are some of the bottlenecks that might likely uh, cause some level of a... Uh, tightening, so to speak, instead of having an easy space for all tech companies, really? I mean, so the, the way I see it, uh, first of all, is, first of all, I'm not even, I'm not even sure what, um, what bill you're reading, because uh, there's a chance that it's the Nidder bill and not the, the Nigerian startup bill, which are two different things. But I mean, ultimately, um, if you want the government to um, assist in any way, or if you want the government to um, try and smoothing the path for some of these startups, they need to at least know them in one way or the other. Like, you need to be able to identify the people you're dealing with. And I think that one of the ways that would happen is, is maybe sort of like a registration uh, type of portal or, or something that sort of keeps the data of those startups um, within the reach of governments. So government can say, okay, you know, we want to, you know, um, say deal with startups in the tech sector. Um, these are the ones that we know. And then, you know, I'm not, I'm not convinced that that would be compulsory. What it may just mean is that if you're not, if the government doesn't know you, then there's really nothing they can sort of do for you directly, if that make, makes any sense. Okay, now I'd like you to use the like of Collab, for example, to give us some sort of case study as towards the support that you expect and also the 
agenda of rethinking, re-strategizing and retooling because the COVID-19 really has thrown up a lot of disruptions. Now we are looking for uh, digital solutions, but we also have to look at this within the context of intellectual property, data, security and a whole lot more. How do we begin to develop a much more robust uh, tech ecosystem and have a strong understanding of this? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the very first thing, um, if you ask me, is to um, sort of forget all the things that we know about about the way businesses are start up and think about them as, or think about startups, particularly in a special case. Meaning, there's sort of these experiments um, that most mostly fail, um, but the point of the experiment is to grow is to grow companies that are really big. Um, so if you think about them in, in that sense and, you know, with all the uncertainty that surrounds them, it sort of brings a different light and a different approach to how you would, say, treat them versus, you know, treat a company, for instance. Uh, when, you think about, when you think about it that way, you now start to think about, like, all the other things that maybe are impediments to their growth. I'll give you, you know, a bunch of examples. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I think... Um, basically hamper startups in Nigeria, for instance, is, is sort of regulation. And I think that the regulation isn't, ha, doesn't hamper them, doesn't come from a bad place. It comes from a lack of understanding place, right? Like where, you know, these guys are doing something, we don't understand what they're doing, so it must be bad. Or these guys are doing something and maybe it would upend um, what we know as normal, so that, that must be bad. But the thing is, change is constant, and these, these guys, most of them would fail, but some of them would bring change at a scale that, you know, is is unprecedented and will, in the process, create, like, so many jobs and, you know, so many opportunities across board. So the way to think about it is, one, these guys are just running an experiment. Think about them as sort of like a research-type program, and, you know, they may fail, but they may succeed and, and, you know, change a lot of things for the better. That's one. The second thing is, Given like COVID and what has happened, we've gotten to this point in the world, whether we realize it or not, where we're now basically competing for the global market. It's no longer local. It's no longer, um, it's no longer what's happening on your street or what's happening in your state. Um, the people in China are competing with you directly. People in the US are competing with you directly. So we need to also put things in place, like laws, that make it easier for us to compete on a global scale. Mm. Let's now also look at the likes of South Africa as well, which has a stronger Africa uh, startup ecosystem. Do you think we can also adopt such models in terms of having innovation hubs? Yes, we have little pockets of players within the industry, but we need stronger hubs where we share resources and then also have better idea synergies and a whole lot more. And then within the scope of uh, tech startups, for example, also linking with, for example, agriculture startups and other uh, players in different value chains, but still the tech startups driving the cause of the redefinition of what our economic recovery is going to be. Do you see the sort of interface taking a much more aggressive front going forward? Um, so the short answer is yes. Um, I, I think that, you know, um, people build stronger when they build collectively. So I think the idea of hubs and, you know, people coming around and sharing ideas is super important. Um, what I would say, though, is that I think that in this particular instance, what the government, what the government's um, job should be, ideally, is to create, like, the environment that allows the private sector to come in and facilitate those hubs. So... Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, the government is focused on, you know, stability and a lot of things. Private sector wants to make money. And typically, if you're making money, it means that most likely you're creating opportunities for a lot more people as well. And I like the fact that you made mention of this now, looking at it within the scope of also having foreign investment come into play. We look at the government's policy, for example, Twitter, and then the backlash we've, we've had with that, but government insists on its own stance. How then do we now begin to maneuver through such policies and still have the foreign uh, players still believe in the Nigerian innovation uh, tech space? Yeah, I mean... Like I said, you know, earlier, I think that a lot of these things happen from a place of not understanding what's, what's happening in this space now versus, you know, being malicious. So I think that um, when you talk about foreign investments, particularly um, 
investments into a country or into a new market, like the single most important thing isn't even like the economic situation, it's stability or being able to predict, right? And with technology, it makes it even doubly hard because, you know, people are typically investing in things that they know that have a 90% chance of failing, but maybe a 10% chance of upside. So what you want to do is make the that risk they're taking is already really big. So make every other risk, every other thing um, sort of out of the way. And and one of the ways to do that is just to make sure that there's regulatory certainty, so, such that when somebody um, is investing on, in a startup, you know that the startup will at least, you know, try its best to stay alive but will not be killed by if it dies it dies from other problems and not ones that are regulatory mm -hmm. um so I, I i think that you know thanks to this bill um if it passes and and um a lot of the other efforts that are going around the ecosystem we would find that if we're able to just have that regulatory certainty for the startups you'd see a lot of things change in, in a very short time Hmm, definitely, we need a very strong regulatory framework to ensure that we have Africa's tech startup ecosystem experience to scale up that it needs to be able to deliver on all of the prospects that we see ahead. Thank you very much for your time on The Breakfast Show this morning. Senor C. Ismaila, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Good to be here.